both FMGC's exchange data through a crosstalk bus and are synchronized. When both FMGCs crosstalk, they are in dual mode of operation. The FMGC which drives the synchronization is called master. The master FMGC is automatically determined by the engagement status of the APFD. If AP1 is on, FMGC1 is master. If AP2 is on, FMGC2 is master, and if AP1 plus 2 and or FD1 plus 2 are on, FMGC1 is master. Here, FMGC1 is the master as AP1 is on. The auto thrust is driven by the master FMGC. Note, when FD1 plus 2 are on, each FMGC drives its FD and FMA on its onside PFD. If no autopilot flight director engaged, auto thrust is controlled by FMGC1. If the crosstalk is lost between both FMGCs, each FMGC operates independently. This mode of operation is called independent mode. The crew is advised by a message on the scratch pad, independent operation. Notice the amber end light on each MCDU which indicates that the on-site FM has detected an independent mode of operation. In independent mode, each FMGCD have the same guidance orders for both APFDs and the same information displayed on EFIS and on MCDU. When the crosstalk is recovered, the FMGCs revert automatically to dual mode. Let us review the failure of one FMGC. FMGC1 for example. Let's assume we are in flight and no previous faults have occurred. If AP1 and auto thrust were engaged, auto flight, AP off and auto thrust off are triggered on ECAM. AP1 and auto thrust go off. Note, you can re-engage the autopilot on the healthy side, in our case AP2. If auto thrust has disengaged, it can be re-engaged at the same time. We will clear the auto flight for you. Notice the amber FM1 light on the MCDU, which indicates that the on-site FM has failed. As a consequence, as long as the FM source is not switched to the other FMGC, ND1 displays, map not avail, red message, and MCDU1 displays the MCDU menu page. Note. When the time permits, a navigation backup function check may be implemented. We will review this later. The pilot non-flying has performed the ECAM actions. Notice the amber message, Offside FM Control. It means that the displays of both NDs are controlled by the remaining FMGC. This mode of operation is called single mode. In single mode, both FMAs display 2FD2 
indicating that FD bars, on both PFDs, are driven by FMGC2. MCDU1 is now a copy of the other MCDU. We have cleared all messages for you. The status page is displayed for review. We are now limited to CAT3 single only. Notice the list of affected systems. Autopilot 1. FM1. Ground Proximity Warning System Terrain. And CAT3 Dual. Autopilot 2. Flight Director 2 and auto thrust are available since FMGC2 is working. After having completed the cam action, notice the green memo message indicating the FM switching. We will now see the consequence of the loss of FM2 leading to the use of navigation backup. Let's assume we are in flight. FM1 is faulty. The amber engine thrust locked message is flashing on the engine warning display. It means that the thrust levers have to be manually adjusted. We will do this for you. We have cleared auto flat AP off and auto thrust off messages for you. Now, the action is to set the FM source back to norm to allow the display of the navigation backup on the MCDU menu page. We have set the FM selector to norm, and, now, the navigation backup pages have appeared on each MCDU menu page. Notice that, backup navigation, is indicated at the bottom of each ND. Each MCDU and associated ND is driven by its on-side IRS. MCDU1, ND1 by IRS1. MCDU2, ND2 by IRS2. IRS3 is used in case of IRS1 or IRS2 failure. This is called navigation backup. When the FMGC works properly, it continuously downloads the flight plan into its associated MCDU. In case of FM1 plus 2 failure, the crew selects the navigation backup function which includes simplified flight planning functions, aircraft position computation, using the on-site IRS, flight plan automatic sequencing, and limited lateral revisions. In those cases where APFDs are still available, managed modes cannot be engaged. Let's come back to the ECAM actions associated to the FM 1 plus 2 failure. Each pilot has to set his own RMP to navigation in order to tune the required nav aids. Indeed, the auto-tune and MCDU manual tune function are lost. This scenario will be reviewed several times in the simulator. Consequently, the rest of the procedure will be then analyzed. We will go directly to the status page. The status page is displayed for review. 
A green message, MCDU Backup Nav Avail, confirms the availability of the MCDU Navigation Backup. Note, as DH indication is lost, ILS approach may only be a CAT1 approach. Notice the list of inoperative systems, e.g. PWS and both FMS are lost. AP1 or 2, an auto thrust might be available if the FG parts of the FMGC are not lost. The reactive wind shear detection function might be available if the FE parts of the FMGC are not lost. If the two FGs are available, engage the AP on side of the IRS, which is assumed to be the best. Remember that nav mode is not available. This is the reason why it is advisable to select the bird on. We assume the procedure is completed. We will now see a locked MCDU. In case you cannot insert any data into the scratch pad, nor change any MCDU page, the MCDU is locked. Such a failure is not automatically detected. To recover the faulty MCDU, simply switch it off, and, after 5 seconds, back to on.